In a world where everything feels like it's spiraling faster than we can keep up with, one thing is undeniable. The internet is not what it used to be. Once a groundbreaking tool, a utopia of free thought and connection, it's now a disorienting labyrinth manipulated by forces both seen and unseen. What happened to the days when we could jump online and stumble upon something new, something real, something that sparked a genuine thought or emotion? The internet was supposed to be a revolution, an open frontier where anyone could contribute, create, and change the world. But somewhere along the way, something went horribly wrong. Today, we're staring into a digital abyss, a space overrun by bots, algorithms, and endless waves of content that has been designed not to inspire, but to control. In a matter of years, the online world has gone from a free-for-all of creativity and innovation to a vast, empty echo chamber. And as we sit back and scroll, we might wonder, is anyone even on the other side anymore? Or are we just being led through a digital funhouse of illusions, designed to keep us distracted, addicted, and ultimately, indifferent. What you're about to hear is the unsettling truth about where the internet stands today. From the silent takeover of AI-generated content to the complete erosion of human interaction, it's clear that the digital world we once knew is dead, replaced by a cold, corporate, controlled monster. But the scariest part, we may not even realize how deep the rabbit hole goes. Stick with me because what follows is more than just a wake-up call. It's the uncomfortable reality we've all been ignoring. The age of the dead internet is here. And it's time we started asking, how long before we lose it all? I've just shown you six clips and two of them were created entirely by AI. Can you pick out which ones? Are you confident? It's tough, right? The colors, the lighting, the textures, they all look so real it's almost impossible to tell what's artificial from what's real. Right now someone might say, sure, just count the fingers. Still struggles with details like that. But think about it. Fast forward a few years. This technology is improving constantly and it's becoming more advanced every day. Imagine it reaching a point where it's self-improving through the interactions by you and me. A commenter saying yes, she has too many fingers to such an extent that there's no visible difference between a real person. It's happening now and this is why what you see may not be what you really think you see. Welcome back. We bring you breaking news from OpenAI's live event. A new version of ChatGPT4. That's their latest and greatest model. This new experience will be available to over a billion users. I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? The internet as we know it is dead, and we are the ones who killed it. Think about that for a second. We've taken this once infinite realm of knowledge, creativity, and genuine human connection and let it rot into something hollow, something controlled. Truth, it barely exists anymore in the vast digital spaces we scroll through. It's significant. We, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Basically, the theory goes that like around 2015, 2016, the internet changed fundamentally. The way that people use it, the type of content you see, the way people interact, it was like fundamentally changed. And the theory basically, and the theory is like generally true, it just matters what percentage of it is true, and I'll explain. Basically, the theory is that love this. all the content and the people and basically your entire infrastructure that you're interacting with on every social media platform and throughout the entire internet is fake that it's basically AI bots that you're talking to that are interacting with you. And uh, 
that 90% or 95% of all the content on the internet and all the discourse and conversations on the internet are created by large language model AI robots. What we're left with is a ghostly echo of what was once real. Social media, online articles, even the videos we watch. So much of it is artificial, manufactured by bots and algorithms to keep us engaged and, let's be honest, to keep us consuming. Videos pop up on YouTube created solely by AI, untouched by any real creative process. And uh, basically this is either used by private individuals that are trying to like profiteer in some capacity or pushing some type of personal ideological agenda or done by the state and state actors in order to manipulate and coerce the population into believing some type of specific narrative or idea. Effectively, you don't need to like ban books or ban ideas. You can just funnel the discourse of what people are having exactly on, how the, you want to. on the internet exactly how you want it to be. Let's not pretend this hasn't affected us on a personal level. Scrolling social media used to feel, well, social. It was meant to connect us. Now, it's isolating. It's empty. It's just us, alone with our screens. Thumbing through content that all looks, feels, and sounds the same. So, what happened? How did we go from the internet being a vibrant, dynamic space of connection and creativity to it being this? And can we even bring it back to life? Now, the other thing that I find very interesting is, is it possible that these companies or private actors that are basically utilizing, like, the open, you know, software features of these platforms are basically utilizing it in such a way to influence the opinions and ideas of influential thought leaders within the United States and around the That's world. That's the most interesting thing to me. Sorry, can you say So that? like, basically... You're a guy. Yeah. That has tons of influence. Yeah. You happen to be on Twitter. You happen to be on Instagram. You happen to be on Facebook. You're on TikTok. Yeah. Scrolling. You're scrolling. We know just from having conversations with different platforms that they can increase... We know that they can decrease, but we also know that they can increase the visibility of certain content. Yeah. Now, they don't have to have a handler for you from the CIA who tells you the opinions that you should have and make sure that you disseminate that information on all your socials and your podcasts, whatever. Yeah. They could do something that is way more manipulative. They could just show you videos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, would... You're talking about the tech CEOs and stuff, right? I'm talking about... Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Akash Singh. Okay. I'm talking about Andrew Schultz. I'm talking about right. anybody. Anybody. Yeah. We could look on our algorithm, and our algorithm could be curated yeah. by not just the tech CEO, but if the tech CEO, we already know that like Zuckerberg is working in with the government. So what if the government was like, listen, okay. we need to get Akash and Andrew to be like really on board with Israel, yeah. or we need to get Akash and Andrew to like really be on board with Hamas. Yeah. I want you to show them. 5x more content showing these different POVs on the subject, and they will naturally, yeah. just through osmosis, start to be more empathetic to one of those sides. Yeah. Now, we know for a fact that you can do that. Yeah. You can curate what somebody sees. Mm, we yeah. know that for a fact because you can do that with ads. Yeah. You can literally just pay for ads. So that's what the most basic version of it is. That's yeah. actually their monetization strategy. Yeah. So what is the highest version? So imagine if presidents, imagine if big CEOs, imagine if people, thought leaders, you know, these like big Twitter celebrities, imagine if, if they're all being, you know, uh, infiltrated with information, but now it's not some handler going, this is what you got to do or else. Now they think that they're curating these ideas. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the internet surveillance economy. When we think of the internet, we imagine this vast open space where ideas roam free, where we can learn, laugh, and connect on our own terms. But the reality today is more like a digital panopticon designed for monitoring, measuring, and monetizing every move we make. To understand how we got here, think back to the early internet. People connected for the sake of curiosity, to share knowledge, and to explore ideas. Tracking was minimal practically non-existent by today's standards. Fast forward and that curiosity driven space has transformed into a corporate machine where surveillance is not just embedded, but fundamental. Practically every action we take online, every click, every search, every scroll, 
is being recorded, analyzed, and ultimately sold. The system is fueled by an industry with a simple goal. Data is money. The more data companies collect on us, the better they can understand and predict our behavior, which means they can sell more precisely targeted ads, craft more irresistible products, and essentially mold us into consumers more effectively. But the question is, at what cost? The thing that brought this up to me that I thought was fascinating is Destiny, the streamer, did a video where basically on stream, he was talking about like getting targeted attacks from a bunch of different accounts, calling him names, saying that he's an idiot, da da da. That's and my bad. they were, <laughs> they were, uh, he starts going to the channels and seeing like, who he is was the shocked person? that people don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> the arrogance. No. That's what I'm saying. He was just curious. This must be an internet conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that convenient? There are guys out there that don't like it extremely opinionated person who knows nothing about the Israel-Gaza conflict and lets people fuck his girlfriend? <laughs> I can't, I cannot believe this. How could this be? Are you AI? I think yeah. you might be AI. I might be AI. I might be AI. He needs to There's no the point cool where he like, like reflected and he was like, wow, I'm really opinionated on things that are incredibly divisive and maybe the other side might dislike me. There was no point in that. Maybe. I think it was that he was just getting comments immediately after posting anything and being like, who are just these people following me around the internet, just shitting on me every chance they get? Yes. What is happening? Yes. So when he clicks on the profiles and the profiles are like, America is best, number one country first. And it's like these weird accounts that have weird posting history mm -hmm. and it's just all kind of strange and he starts looking at, like the profile pictures and the profile pictures is like a guy that looks like a regular fucking dude that you would see at walmart and then behind him are books that aren't real characters it's like fake ai books mm -hmm. that have like strange shapes that are supposed to resemble language but it's not mm -hmm. and he's like oh the picture's ai the content he's able to search tweets and find like other tweets of other accounts with other names and other countries posting similar types of content and he's like oh this is a bot and so it's verifiable and true that there are bots that are yeah. creating content. The question is a percentage. And following people. The question is a percentage, and the question is why. Well, why makes perfect sense. Like, if you hate somebody, but you don't want to go through the time to hate them, you just sick bots on them all day. Yeah. Like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So there is someone who's like, oh, well, I mean, there might be another explanation. Or on some Dave Smith shit where it's like, I think he was the one that was saying, like, the government wants to do, get their access Curing to their narrative. honeypots or whatever. Now, just they want to do what the, the things they really want to do and then distract you with gender wars or whatever. Let's have a bunch of bots and fake news stories and whatever, just getting Inflate everybody focused on gender wars. And, and we just this, keep yeah. getting the money how we want. Do we keep passing laws that yeah. we want? Do we keep doing all that? Yeah. Technology isn't just about getting to know you better. It's about control. When you're constantly being watched, there's a psychological impact. Your behavior changes even subconsciously. You hesitate to look up certain things, to ask certain questions, and sometimes even to say certain things out loud. It's an invasion that shifts from our screens into our minds, guiding our thoughts and choices in subtle ways. Today, even a casual Google search is logged, categorized, and stored indefinitely. And it's not just one search, it's an accumulation of your searches, patterns, habits, preferences, building up a profile of you that's eerily precise. Companies call this personalization, but really, it's profiling. They know your routines, your interests, maybe even your fears. They know when you're likely to browse, what will capture your attention, and how long you'll linger. It's as though the internet no longer observes us as individuals, but rather as predictable patterns of behavior, just data points to be mined. The scary part is that this isn't a conspiracy theory, it's a widely accepted business model. Social media giants, search engines, streaming platforms, all of them run on the same principle. They provide a service for free, and we pay with our data, and that data is valuable beyond imagination. Why else would companies invest millions in data collection and storage technologies? We're talking about a global industry that's grown into one of the most profitable sectors on the planet, all thanks to our browsing habits. We become so accustomed to this that we hardly question it anymore. The idea of paying for privacy feels foreign, almost impractical, because privacy on the internet is no longer the default setting. The early days, our online lives were more anonymous, more of a blank slate. Now we're practically expected to share our personal information for access to basic conveniences. Our virtual footprints are not just for us anymore. They're a product to be traded, inspected, and optimized by others. Consider what this means for society at large. When our internet experience is shaped by data-driven tracking, we're less likely to encounter things outside our established interests. We're nudged, funneled, kept on a curated path where our curiosity is gently, yet firmly controlled. 
We see the news they think we want, the products they know we'll buy, the opinions they believe we'll agree with. It's not just surveillance, it's digital narrowing, a way of turning the internet from a window into a mirror, reflecting back only the version of the world that keeps us clicking and consuming. And the truly chilling part, we've normalized it. We become part of a massive social experiment where the boundaries of privacy and autonomy are continually pushed back inch by inch by terms and conditions so long no one reads them and by tracking agreements so buried in fine print we don't notice them. So what do we do? Do we opt out of the system entirely, maybe, but realistically that's not possible for most people. What we can do is start by being aware by understanding the trade-offs and recognizing what we're giving up every time we agree to a privacy policy without thinking. Yeah. So, so that's why you want to shut down a TikTok that you can't control. Yeah. And you don't want to shut down a Facebook and Instagram, yeah. anything on Meta, and it, even maybe Twitter. You don't want to shut down the ones that you know are in cahoots with the government. Because Social media is not the enemy of the government like we thought it was. This is free speech. We can actually come together. We can organize. We can start protests. We can do this. No, 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 no. Social enemy might be a tool by this theory, a tool of the government to get you to believe whatever it is you want to believe. Or no, they want you to believe. And it can go even beyond content. So like, let's say you just like say a tweet that is controversial. You just now have five other tweets below being like, oh, dude, no, nah, you really missed it on this. Like, that's actually not true. Da, 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 da. And you're like, oh, man, I guess all my followers or saying I'm out of line on this, like maybe I should readjust my opinion. There's a, and all of those bots, all of those accounts are bots paid for by one individual. To or, make or you government. feel like you should or shouldn't have that opinion. You said that this is a time for soul searching in social media businesses and, and you were part of building the largest one. I feel tremendous guilt. It is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. An anomaly on Capitol Hill. Private tech CEOs asking for more government regulation. It's usually the other way around. Remember earlier when I asked if you could pick out which two of those six clips were created entirely by artificial intelligence? Were you able to find the two? Here's the twist. Every single clip was generated by AI. Some of you might have spotted it, but for many, myself included, it's almost impossible to tell what's real anymore. And it gets even more interesting. How much of this video you're watching now do you think was crafted? I'd estimate about 40 of it came together with AI assistance, saving me a huge amount of time. An example of AI's usefulness, sure. But the ideas here, the message, they're all mine. This technology is advancing fast and it's eerie to consider how much of our media landscape is shaped by it, quietly influencing our thinking, maybe even in ways we don't notice. Imagine the power to subtly sway your mood, shift your beliefs or even alter life choices. That's where AI's potential impact really hits home. My message for everyone tuning in, this is the reality we live in today. Don't let everything you see on screen sink in unchallenged. Pause, reflect, think about how this content might be steering your decisions, however subtly. Elon Musk once said, trust no one, not even no one. That's kind of my approach to online content. We're navigating an internet filled with real people like you and me, but also robots and influencers with hidden agendas. As AI races towards the goal of true sentience, we have to ask, are we headed for a dystopia or a new kind of enlightenment? The next time we go online, we should ask ourselves, are we free to search, explore, and create without the weight of silent surveillance watching our every move? Or are we merely players in a system designed not for freedom, but for profit? Maybe it's time to question not only how we use the internet, but also who's really in control when we do. Think about where we're going to be in 10 years and just how easy it will be to generate content at scale um, and what sort of systems we'll build to navigate those pieces of content. I just think it's going to be a completely different internet. So I do think that the internet that we probably grew up with, like the original version of the web, the human version of the web is dead. 
I actually think that's awesome if we all start to believe this. Then we'll start putting less stock in the fucking idiots online. Either the guys shitting on India, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> or the guys saying whatever racist stuff. It's like, oh, I don't even need to take this seriously. This is bots. I don't even need to engage with this mentally. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content.